Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMatchKey.com and in this video, I'm going to help you pass Security Plus. Security Plus is one of the most popular certifications when it comes to cybersecurity. In fact, it's usually the first cybersecurity certification people go after when they decide that they want to be in cybersecurity. So what is Security Plus. Security Plus is a CompTIA certification. What is CompTIA? CompTIA is a really big IT vendor certification. Actually, I'm a CompTIA partner, meaning that CompTIA trusts me to give you guys what you need in the training program, the winner circle to be exact, um, to actually pass the Security Plus and A Plus and the Network Plus. So CompTIA is the vendor so when you go to college the college is xyz college and then the degree programs underneath that are the degree programs so comptia is the college a plus net plus security plus would be the degree programs you understand that correlation of course you do so with security plus i always tell my guys and my girls to get a plus and net plus and then tackle Security Plus. Do you have to do that? Of course not. It's people in a minority that go ahead and take Security Plus first and pass it and knock it out the park. There's two reasons that I tell you to get Security Plus after you get that other stuff. Because most likely, if you get A Plus, if you get Net Plus, you're going to have some experience that goes along with it. So my students, I tell them to get that stuff just so they have a well-rounded knowledge, right? Because even though Security Plus is cybersecurity focused, if you don't have a strong foundation, Security Plus is difficult. And then when you actually get inside the real world and actually start doing cyber stuff, it's gonna make stuff a lot harder if you don't have that foundational support, if you don't have that foundation underneath you. So my guys and my girls, they actually start off with ITF Plus. So they got a super strong foundation and they get a plus and they get network plus. Now, like I said, do you have to do that? Not at all. You can go ahead and go straight for security plus. So security plus is a 90 minute, 90 question test. Now you may not get 90 questions. You may get less than that. It's a maximum of 90 questions. And the passing score is 750, 750 out of 900. So every CompTIA exam, is on a scale of 900 and you got to get 750 out of 900 to successfully pass the security plus so as i always tell you guys my job is to help you get certified so that's what this video is all about we're going to go through a couple questions and answers just to get you a little bit more acclimated to how you need to be thinking when you actually get inside the testing center and when you actually take the actual exam you ready let's get into it blank technology is a capability of a computer system, electronic system, or network to deliver uninterrupted service despite one or more of its components failing. Does that sound like fault tolerance, fault interceptor, scalability, or disruptive allocation? The answer to this is fault tolerance. The more fault tolerance you have, the better. Literally, fault tolerance means that your device, your network is more tolerant to faults. So when things break, it won't actually break completely. When things don't go right, it's actually more tolerant. And the reason it's more tolerant is because you put things in place that make the faults not just crippling. It doesn't actually melt down the whole network. It doesn't actually break the entire system. You have things in place that when one thing goes down, something goes up. This goes down, this comes up. All right, so backups, power supplies, whatever that fault tolerance comes from, it makes the network, it makes the device, it makes the organization a lot stronger if fault tolerance is in place. Make sense? A blank is a form of physical security and is most susceptible to blank attacks. All right, gang, so the form of physical security that we're talking about in this is gonna be a security guard. And what's most susceptible to social engineering would be that security guard. 
So social engineering is a big word that simply means being nosy. So you're just asking a bunch of questions, ask a bunch of probing questions to see if you can get valid information, if you can get valuable information from a person, right? So you befriend or try to befriend a security guard. At, hey, how long you been working here? Oh, okay. What time do you get off? Oh, okay. That door over there, is it usually locked? Oh, okay. Oh, you got a security badge? How does that work? Oh, okay. Is this camera up here, is it working or? So basically it sounds like it's just harmless chitter chatter, but it's actually somebody trying to probe into what you're doing, what you got going on, to use that information against you and your organization. Key escrow is a method of storing important cryptographic keys. A key escrow is like a blank for your user's keys. Cryptographic keys encrypt and decrypt. So it makes stuff secret and then allows you to read that secret stuff and only allows you or the person that has the decrypt key to read that stuff. A key escrow will act as a valet. So it would take those keys and store them in a safe place until you return. Now that's what the valet is supposed to do, but I, I've seen videos on YouTube of you know, valets doing donuts and Lamborghinis and all kind of crazy stuff like that. But a key escrow wouldn't do that to you. It's gonna take the key, keep it safe until you return, until you actually need to use it to either encrypt something or decrypt something. Jimmy is doing a scan that detects and classifies system weaknesses in computers, networks and communication equipment and predicts the effectiveness of countermeasures. What type of scan is Jimmy doing? A vulnerability scan does just that. It scans for vulnerabilities. So it looks for weak points inside of an organization, inside of a network, inside of a device, and it tries to actually alert you, tell you, or whoever actually is in charge that, hey man, you got these vulnerabilities. I found it on this scan. These are some of the things that you could possibly do to prevent these weaknesses and these weak points from compromising your organization. James just got fired from his job as a software engineer. Before turning in his laptop, James starts injecting client-side scripts into web pages of the company's website. What type of scripting is James using? On the actual exam, sometimes they're gonna be things that you've never seen before. You've never seen them before, don't remember studying them, and a lot of times that's because it doesn't matter. That's not the answer. They're throwing that in there just to throw you off. So the answer to this is cross-site scripting. Those other answers are just shit I made up, right? So XSS is cross-site scripting. So if you're ever on the exam or if you're ever looking at anything, you see XSS, it just cross-site scripting. The X stands for cross. Cain and Abel is most closely related to which of the following? Cain and Abel is a password cracking tool. And the weaker your password, the easier it is for can and able to figure out what your password is and to start using it, so on and so forth. There's a lot of password cracking tools and most of them literally just sit there and they just try and guess your password. Guess, 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 until it figures out what your password is. And once it figures out what your password is, it's probably going to use it across as many sites as possible. Because unfortunately, you know, pro tip, Make sure that you're not using the same password across everything. Your damn Facebook password should not be your bank password. Your Netflix password should not be your Instagram password. Try to switch it up. Try to be as safe as possible. Make sure that you're using strong passwords across all platforms. Because if you're using the same damn password across all platforms, once a person has one thing, they got everything. Now, a quick message from our sponsors. Speaking about having everything, 
the winner circle has everything. The winner circle is our all new program and we're actually accepting applications right now, right now. If you're familiar with the Zero to Hero program, it's pretty much the Zero to IT Hero program on steroids. So you get everything that was in the Zero to Hero program, plus you get weekly live sessions with me, plus you get to take the exam twice. Let's say that you go in there, you're nervous, your stomach hurt, stuff ain't go right, you can take the exam again on us. Last but not least, we have an industry professional come in once a month and talk to you guys just to tell you how it's gonna be when you actually break into IT. As you already know, we got ITL Plus, A Plus, Net Plus, Security Plus, plus a bunch of bonus training. And most of the students are getting those four certifications that I just talked about in about 120 days, in about 90 to 100 days. So about three or four months. So if that sounds like that's something that you would want to do, make sure you click the link below. You got to apply. You got to put in your application. And if you accept it, I'll see you in class. Rebecca works for Yosemite Piping Corporation. She receives a call about providing her login details for her account from the IT team. The caller requests she provide her password for an information insurance audit. What should Rebecca do next? When you guys are actually in the field, when you guys are actually working in IT, when somebody calls you or just in everyday life, when somebody calls you asking you for your password, that's probably a red flag. That's probably somebody that's trying to do something bad to you. But just to verify, just like Rebecca did, she's gonna call the IT department. Hey, are y'all calling around asking people for their passwords? The IT department gonna tell her hell no, and then she can hang up the phone and go ahead about her life. The action or process of integrating a new employee into an organization or familiarizing a new customer or client with one's products or services. What does this statement describe? Real simple onboarding just means getting somebody on board. Hey man, this is how we do things, this is how things are gonna go. So it's pretty much just an introduction to how you do things and how they need to conduct themselves. Gary Reynolds is running for governor. He recently made several controversial statements that upset several groups of people. A hacker named Iron Wolf decided to hack the potential governor's campaign website. Iron Wolf would be best described as a So a hacktivist, real simple, is a activist who's a hacker. So a lot of times a hacktivist has some kind of political motivation. Just like Mr. Reynolds said something he wasn't feeling, he wanted to go after him as a politician. So usually it's politicians, senators, governors, lawyers, judges, it's people that have some type of political influence or some type of political ties. And the hacktivist actually tries to hack their campaign website or tries to hack something that would pretty much stop them from doing whatever they're trying to do. Do you see how the questions are kind of bouncing around? There's not one common theme. So there's hundreds, literally hundreds of topics on the actual exam. And the way the exam is set up, it's not going to have 10 questions about social engineering and then five questions about intrusion detection. It's going to have questions just about a little bit of everything. So that's why you got to be extremely focused, know what to study, know how to prepare, because it's only going to be 90 questions out of hundreds of topics. Which of the following are types of social engineering? Choose all that apply. Phishing is a way to get information from a person, usually via email. So the email isn't gonna look professional, it's gonna have misspellings, and it's probably gonna ask you something crazy. If I'm gonna say something like, hey man, I got a million dollars, but it's tied up in an overseas bank account, I just need to use your account to have the money in there, and just for putting the money in there, I'll give you $50,000. I just need your bank account and your social security number. So that's phishing, kind of casting a wide net hoping that somebody bite, hoping we get some kind of sucker to take part of this. Now, whaling, usually we don't wanna go against anybody, we wanna go against the biggest 
person, right? We want to go for the CEO. We want to go for the biggest company. We want to go for the most important person, right? So whaling is social engineering as well, but you're trying to get information from a super important person. Fishing is like, I'm just trying to get information from anybody. Gang, I want you to do one thing for me. Make sure you watch my last video. It should be popping up somewhere around here. That video can help you break into IT. As always, like this video, subscribe, and other than that, I'll see you in class.